Welcome to Art Schools Network No More Webinar Series. This is an exciting episode three of a three-part series with Media Art Standards. Today we're looking at model cornerstone assessments. Choose them, use them, and make them your own. This is Christy Calloway that you can hear. I'm the executive director and host of today's webinar. We are a national arts organization dedicated to the leaders of art schools. Our members are everywhere. But I got rid of that slide, so I'm going to go on to Corey Wilkerson. She's today's guest speaker. She is the project manager for the State Education Agency Directors of Arts Education, nicknamed C-Day. Now, I just want to clarify, every state has a Department of Ed, and at every Department of Ed, there's an education associate. So Corey Wilkerson is our wonderful project manager who's working with all of them. Corey, thanks for joining us today to tell us about model cornerstone assessments. Please give us a little background about yourself, and then let's get into it. Well, thank you so much for having me, Christy. As you said, I'm the project director for the State Education Agency, Directors of Arts Education, and I've had a great deal of experience in standards. In fact, some people call me a standards fanatic, um, doing work in my home state of Pennsylvania. I also had the privilege of serving uh, for C-Day with the National Coalition for Core Arts Standards, who facilitated the writing of the new 2014 standards, and as a member of the National Coalition's Media Arts Leadership Committee, I'm really dedicated to media arts. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the standards first. So first, our commercial. We think the standards are wonderful. We think they bring a world of expressive and purposeful ideas for dance, music, theater, visual arts, and for the first time, media arts. We also love the interactive home. Uh, they were created by educators for educators, and we wanted our website to also be for educators. And it's very user-friendly. Christy, I think you said you had used it, had you not? Yes, I love the website. I was impressed how you could drill down into the standards and print them up as one page or a packet. And if you're a new teacher or you have a substitute teacher or if you're long-range planning with other teachers or integrating, it seemed like it would be a real easy way to custom create your own. And I know you're going to go into more of that in a little bit, but I think it's very exciting, very user-friendly, and um, available to everyone. It is. And that's at www.nationalartsstandards.org. So we can go on to our next slide and just take a peek at who wrote these standards. As I said, the standards writing was facilitated by the National Coalition for Core Art Standards, and that's really a coalition of major arts organizations across the country. American Alliance for Theater and Education, Americans for the Arts, the College Board, Educational Theater Association, the National Art Education Association, the National Association for Music Education, our Media Arts Committee, the National Dance Education Organization, the State Education Agency Directors of Arts Education, and Young Audiences Arts for Learning. They pulled together teams of teachers that represented rural, suburban, urban school districts, 30 of our 50 states, pre-K through 12 and higher ed, and as well, 6,000 reviewers gave their input. So why rewrite the 1994 standards? A lot of things have changed since 1994. If you may remember that cell phones were kind of giant and they sat in a bag in your car. You didn't have a computer in your pocket. Um, so things have to change in standards as well to meet the needs of our 21st century learners. We also did it to remind us all that the arts are a core academic subject. And we did it to remind us that as a nation, we're invested in the arts. The standards are based in artistic literacy, which is really all about lifelong learning in the arts. Five major thoughts. The arts as communication. To be artistically literate means to utilize media, symbols, and metaphor to play with and communicate ideas. It means to turn to the arts for creative personal realization. And also, to know and understand the arts as a deep connection to our culture and our history. And finally, to find joy and well-being in the arts and seek out arts experiences in the community. This is the basis of these art standards. The way they spilled out was in a process. Artistic processes are really the way the brain and the body make art. They link art making with the learner. Four artistic processes were identified, creating, performing, and for some of our, uh, our disciplines, producing or presenting. In media arts, we call it producing. Responding and connecting. 
these spill down into 11 anchor standards. The 11 anchor standards really identify what artistic literacy looks like in terms of general knowledge and skills. And then you're absolutely right, Christy, thank you so much. You're reading my mind. These 11 artistic, or I'm sorry, 11 anchor standards had to go into performance standards. And you can go ahead to the next slide. So performance standards are really what it looks like grade by grade for each specific discipline. They're organized by those artistic processes. They express what you see the students doing, what students know and do, pre-K through eight, and at three levels of proficiency at high school. We go ahead to the next slide. We also included some help to connect these standards with your classroom, some instructional resources. There are some process verbs that take creating, for example, and break it down into some steps. There are enduring understandings and essential questions you can use to unpack these standards in the classroom, and some model cornerstone assessments that I want to talk to you a little bit more about. So thinking about what is a standard, a standard is an important intersection. It creates that intersection between educators, administrators, parents, and students. Standards serve as the basis for literacy in, in the arts. They pave the way for access to an arts education. They support advocacy, and they communicate what students should know and do across a sequential arts education. According to Google, a standard is the following things. A level of attainment, an idea or thing used as a measure, norm, or model, a document that provides guidelines or characteristics to be used consistently, and finally, a directional device or a roadmap. However, a standard is none of these things without instruction and assessment. Standards target what to learn and give us a direction to head in, but instruction paves the way for learning. It chooses the path and mode of travel, like our little airplane down at the bottom there. And then finally, assessment tells us if learning really happened. Did we get to our destination? Or if not, how close? And if you notice, they're really in a circle. On, in our images, because standards, instruction, and assessment are circular, a circular form of communication. We've provided some model cornerstone assessments with our standards to help teachers create this circle. These are models because we want teachers to look at them, steal them, riff off them, adapt them, adopt them to their own use. They give an example of how standards could be utilized and measured. Here's the definition of a model cornerstone assessment. They appear at benchmark grades of 2, 5, and 8, and at the three high school levels, proficient, accomplished, and advanced. And they are examples of the type of evidence needed to show student achievement aligned to targeted performance standards. Um, we worked with Jay McTie of Wiggins and McTie, the authors of the uh, Understanding by Design pedagogy and textbooks. And Jay said that MCAs are examples of observable and measurable assessment tasks. These are observable and measurable assessment tasks based on the new standards. They should be models of methods that richly assess student learning, which teachers can modify and use. And that's what we hope to have accomplished. I have a great quote from Jay. He says that MCAs are substantive in nature and require students to apply factual knowledge, concepts, skills, higher order thinking, and habits of mind in order to be successful. They're worthy of being taught to. And and MCAs, yeah. MCAs are model, model cornerstone assessments, correct? MCAs are model cornerstone assessments. Thank you so okay. much for double checking me on that. And you've been talking a lot about how these standards really have some wonderful connecting points. I love how habits of mind are, are a part of the MCAs as connecting points. I love that this cornerstone assessments could also be used by the students themselves for their own learning or benchmarking, or a parent could look at them um, or use them to compare their, their students against others. Um, it, or just with the end in mind, it's it's 
it's very exciting that you guys have been able to pull together such a robust uh, website that houses all of this. I know you're going to tell us a little bit more now. That great thoughts, Christy. We did envision students using these as well. Super connection there. Um, I wanted to show you where the model cornerstone assessments can be found on our website. And that, again, is www.nationalartsstandards.org. And you can see where I've circled. You can click on Model Cornerstone Assessment View, and then just choose your discipline and grade level, and you'll receive links to PDF files of all of our examples. At some point, we hope to be benchmarking these and producing student work. Let's take a peek at what you'll see when you click on a model cornerstone assessment. So here's the blank template. We also offer a blank template so that teachers can create their own. You'll notice, and if you would click on um, the slide, you'll notice that the model cornerstone assessment includes examples of scoring devices detailed assessment focus chart. Go ahead and click. And there you go. Suggested scoring devices, task-specific rubrics. Go ahead and click. And an assessment focus chart, which pulls it all together. And that takes us to our next slide. In the assessment focus chart, you can see how all of the package of the standards, all of those support materials and the standards themselves, weave into supporting materials how the enduring understandings and essential questions can be used or modified or adapted for your particular classroom, how the anchor standards fit in, and what key traits you'd see. What do you look for in the student in this standard? And finally, linking that all to the performance standard. I love it. I love all these simple charts. MCAs bring to life a method of measuring your targeted learning goals. And again, MCA's model cornerstone assessments are only models. Steal them, take them, adopt them, adapt them in any way that you please. It's hoped that teachers will customize them to their use. Finally, it's important to remember that the new National Core Art Standards are voluntary. Each state will decide if they want to adopt the new Core Art Standards, adapt them, or ignore them. But we hope that you'll spread the word because they're a rich source for teaching and learning. And if you're a media arts teacher, don't forget to join the media arts community at www.mediaartseducation.org, where you'll find resources unique to media arts education. Well, fantastic. Again, I encourage all of our media arts uh, educators from Art Schools Network to, to join this organization and this coalition and this collaborative. It's very exciting. They've often felt like singletons in their schools, but to know that there's a mothership and these wonderful standards and assessments um, to go with it, and they can network with each other, that's what our organization is all about. So we appreciate you bringing these resources to our membership, Corey. Um, next week we'll be in Denver, but we're looking to have a Media Arts Strand in Seattle 2015 because our theme is arts and technology. So hopefully Ms. Corey will come back and provide us some more in-depth uh, multi-day experiences for all of us, and we'll be a year down the road. Um, so thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, Corey. Thank you so much for having me, Christy. Again, this is Art Schools Network. We were here with Corey Wilkerson, and we were looking at media art standards. We hope that you'll check out the previous two episodes. And if you have an idea for a webinar or you have more questions, please send them to me or to Corey, and we're happy to get back to you. Have a great school day.